Hi everyone, I want to talk about vomiting in pregnancy. Maybe you're pregnant and you have nausea and vomiting. Okay, let's go. If you're pregnant and you are vomiting very severely, we call that aviremesis gravidarum. Anybody could experience nausea and vomiting at any time, but this presentation is limited to those who are pregnant only. So, a woman is pregnant, vomiting, but very severely, that is called aberemesis gravidarum. In aberemesis, well, generally in pregnancy, nausea is a very common symptom. And the nausea can be without vomiting, but vomiting could be very mild, and usually in the first trimester and decreases as the pregnancy gets older. It is considered to be a normal psychological change in pregnancy, except when it is beyond control. That would then give the definition that this vomiting is severe enough to meet the diagnosis of aparemesis gravidarum. Aparemesis gravidarum is when there is severe or persistent vomiting with loss of medical consequences to both the mother and the child. Pregnant and you're in the first trimester, you are likely going to experience nausea and vomiting. That is expected to decrease as the pregnancy grows. It may persist throughout pregnancy in some women, and it affects only 1% of all pregnant women. What are the risk factors? Genesis. I have a small story here that a wife to my friend will vomit from the first to the third trimester of all her four pregnancies. And she will even vomit few hours after delivery. Her mother told me that she was like that throughout her own five pregnancies. Well, as may be expected, I joke about it to my friend and the wife that why would this woman be passing through this situation on a time for four good times? Well, they are blessed with four kids and they stopped. So, if a woman is having a paramesis gravidarum, vomiting throughout pregnancy, well, you may find out if that is running in the family because there's genetic component there. It is multifactorial in etiology. It was in pregnant women that are very young, so younger age group. Commoner among primary gravida, those that are having pregnancy for the first time, Pre-pregnancy motion sickness, migraines, or estrogen-based medications that have nausea and vomiting will likely have that when they're pregnant. Let me repeat. When a woman is not pregnant, but she is known to be having motion sickness or migraine, or she's having some medications that are estrogen-laden, and all through that time, she'll be having nausea and vomiting. Expect her pregnancy to present that same way. I mean that the woman will be having severe nausea and vomiting pregnancy. It's very likely. Super testers are prone to that. Multiple gestation, like having twins or triplets, it's like that because it has to do with the level of human coronary gonadotrophin. 
So we we'll expect it to be high in the first trimester. The woman will be vomiting a lot in the first trimester, and it will be decreasing as the pregnancy grows older. But that is not the case in few women who will likely be vomiting throughout the entire period of pregnancy up till after delivery. Prior pregnancy symptoms with severe vomiting will give an indication that we might be dealing with the same this time. So if a woman had been pregnant in the past, and she had been diagnosed with her paremesis gravidarum, expect the same in this pregnancy. That is the form mole, gasophagia reflux disease, and alcohol use and smoking cigarettes are expected to be protective, but not so in pregnancy. Because our advice against alcohol and I would advise you to quit smoking because alcohol can give you fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. And of course, smoking will give array of problems, including intrauterine growth restriction or intrauterine growth retardation, depending on where you are in the world, you know, depending on what you call it in your jurisdiction. So, I'm not going to encourage you to take alcohol because there's no level of alcohol that is safe in pregnancy and there's no time that it is safe in pregnancy. So they are expected to be protective when it comes to aparamesis gravidarum, but because I cannot advise you to indulge in that, then it is off the table. Pathogenesis. It is unclear or uncertain that a particular item or mechanism is responsible for the condition. However, the following have been implicated. Rapid rising of beta human chronic gonadotrophin and its peak at the first trimester has been implicated. Progesterone with or without oestrogen in pregnancy with smooth muscle relaxation, or worsening gasophagia reflux disease, leads to possible constipation, nausea, vomiting with or without aparemesis gravidarum. Let me explain that further. Rapid rise in normal chronic gonadotrophin and progesterone that is going to relax all smooth muscles, all in pregnancy, will probably be responsible here. Psychological factors have roles to play also, and nutrient deficiency in zinc and vitamin B6 have also been implicated. I think that is the reason behind the usage of zinc and vitamin B6 leading medications as part of the treatment of nausea and vomiting in pregnancy. Immunological anomalies, and of course, genetic factors, like I've said the other time. What is the pattern? The onset is usually at sixth week of pregnancy. It's expected to peak at tenth week of pregnancy and start going down between the 15th and 20th week of gestation. But it may continue on the third trimester or even delivery in some other women, like the example of my friend's wife that I mentioned earlier. What are the possible investigations here? Aparamesis gravidarum is clinically diagnosed, but we have to rule out some possible systemic conditions like pyelonephritis, thyrotoxicosis, 
if this is in tropical region, you can rule out malaria and of course gastroenteritis. We are going to have ultrasound done for confirmation of viable pregnancy and whether or not this is a multiple gestation or we are dealing with a dozen form more. If we are suspecting hemolysis, elevated liver enzymes, and low platelet called F syndrome, then we have complete blood count done with peripheral smear. The level of platelet should be known. LDH and after globin, liver function test, and liver enzymes as it. Still on investigation, we will do analysis, electrolyte to know the level of magnesium, calcium, potassium, and sodium, and blood urea nitrogen with creatinine, serum amylase, and lipase. What are the possible differential diagnoses when a pregnant woman is having severe vomiting called aparemesis gravidarum. It's possible this is herpes syndrome. I will not go into details of herpes syndrome here because I've made a separate presentation on herpes syndrome and it's already published. Please, you can check that out. Preeclampsia is another topic for another day entirely and that will be out soon. Could be multiple gestation and ultrasound will confirm the same. Hypothyroidism, the clinical features and history could give clue. And with thyroid stimulation hormone and level of T3 and T4, we're gonna have our diagnosis. Motion sickness from history, possibility of tumors or gestational trophoblastic neoplasia or a dirty one mole or could be ruled out. Is there history of internal abuse here? Or is this woman having bowel obstruction? Is she on any medication? And we're dealing with side effects right now, including the cannabis abuse. All these are possible differential diagnoses when a woman is having recalcitrant vomiting and the diagnosis of aparemesis gravidarum is being made. Treatment. I'll start by talking about non pharmacological interventions. The first thing to advise the woman against is if you know the triggers, kindly avoid them. If it's possible, there should be dietary changes. Add ginger, add aridocin, and docilamine. There is medication containing both pyrodicine and docilamine, and that is declatine. And you can start them in hydrogen, meclisine, or benadryl. We have to determine the level of dehydration. We then correct with appropriate intravenous fluid infusion. We assess the frequency of vomiting, and if you feel it is so severe, we can give tiamine. And we can admin depending on how serious the situation is. We give the intravenous fluid, magnesium, calcium, and phosphorus replacement as the outcome of electrolyte assay will dictate. On a central intravenously or glucocorticoids, metoclopramide, promethazine, or procloperazine could be deployed here. Complications to the mother, there's possibility of dehydration, electrolyte imbalance. Acid-based imbalance, 
Mallory Way's tear because of continuous and repeated vomiting, the esophageal lining could be torn apart. When it came encephalopathy, that is an account of which we give to our name if it's very severe. And of course, if appropriate intervention is not a bark upon on a timely basis, the woman could die. For the features, possibility of intrauterine growth restriction, some call it intrauterine growth retardation, depending on where you are in the part of the world. But besides that, the fetus is a very efficient parasite that will make use of every available nutrient that could pass through the placenta. Therefore, they are mostly not affected beyond that level. In conclusion, there is need for regular antenatal visits so that the doctor will be afforded the opportunity to make the determination about the diagnosis and, of course, institute appropriate intervention on a timely basis. So, kindly contact your physician whenever you are uncomfortable. Remember that you can't take just any medication without the knowledge of your physician because it may arm you or your baby or both. So with this, I come to the end of presentation as far as Aphromesis gravidarum is concerned. Kindly subscribe to my channel so that you can get these publications immediately they are published. Thanks. I appreciate it.